Yeah, pretty much. There's not really much else that uh, the SI can really do at this point. Um, I do like the idea that Jacob implemented with t uh, survivors not being able to... Or I shouldn't say that. Um, so I was being able to take the tank wherever they wanted. Actually, with that being said, we are going to go live here with the first half of the first round. Once again, Sultans of Suck over on your survivor half with obviously AG and Amasi Gaming on the SI. And I'll let you take things away. Yeah, so I mean, tank is already almost about to spawn, but they do have a very large damage potential set up here that they might even be able to get it, like a lot of damage off, which I have seen in the beginning. Jockey's actually going to pre spawn at the bottom. Looks like he's going to get shut down, though, from an M2. Charger broke open the door, but. I actually find the charge in the... I'm not actually... Yeah, Rochelle's barely in the spin in the back, though. So that is a pretty solid amount of damage. Not as much as it probably could have been had they not shut down both the Hunter and the Jockey. But yeah, I mean, getting any kind of ship pre-tank, especially with the tank this early, can be pretty big. Do we have War Rooms? Uh, no, not for this game. But yeah, as you mentioned, that spit could have done a lot more damage. Unfortunately, it didn't cover the entire back wall of the staircase. So uh, we saw Rochelle being able to slip away up behind the staircase and actually uh, negate some of that damage. But with that being said, once again, Tank is up in the hands of a Fearsome Foursome. Um, I'm not too sure who that is. I know Matt is Gris. Ryu, I mean, it is Ryu. Yeah. I so, I mean... Point in Ohio, actually. Yeah. I'm not sure if I agree 100% on the sacking of the Smoker, unless they are certain that they're going to be getting a Charger with it. Uh, just because, I mean, I think that the hit that they had there with the uh, Hunter Jockey Smoker was the easiest to land a tri cap in this area with. Whereas Charger, you kind of have to jump around a bit. Tank is going to commit here, going to probably hit this chair right out of the way, not get blocked there. Looking for the corner on the coach is going to find it. It's already at about 50% health though, and the SN it really is coming here. Boomer's not anything there, and Tank is all alone right now. He does have a new cap though. The rest of the support is coming in. Two SI landing on top of Alice. Actually, that's going to be a two cap. This might be a couple punches, but no, he's just going to offer this in the corner onto Nick. He's might, yeah, he actually ends up securing the in-cap, but this is going to be a dead tank here. That, I think, is pretty solid damage, more than you usually see coming out of that, uh, especially since the SI didn't really give a whole lot uh, for him to work with. So, pretty nice job for, by Ryu, securing two in-caps, and now they're going to be bleeding out for the whole entirety of the chapter. Yeah, indeed, as you just mentioned, three survivors pretty much bleeding. Boomfrag didn't really need to pop a set of pills there. I understand he did kind of a precautionary uh, measure there for the tank. But yeah, some good damage coming out from Ryu and Team AG on the survivors there with a the tank. The tank could have actually ended it. Um, he did have the double cap and one survivor was free, but unfortunately he's one punch and clearing two survivors. But attack coming here. Hunter and Charger both landing. Spit goes down top of the charge, back in the hallway. Jockey latching onto Rochelle as well. That's going to be a crap ton of damage out on the survivors. Rochelle still being rolled around <laughs> inside the spit as I cough into the mic. And that's going to be possibly another end cap. No, Rochelle will get cleared at the last second. And what a hit there by AG, pushing out the damage that the tank lacked. Yeah, I mean, I mean that makes the map next to unsurvivable overall for the survivors. I mean, they can still do it, but it makes it really grind now that they have the entirety of the map distance to get. Um, and plus, Nick is black and white, and they have not given him pills yet. So they're going to want to probably get right on that. And it looks like I saw your setup on the bottom. Hunter is going to scratch open those fire doors so they can not just walk through that unless they take it, like over 20 damage. Uh, probably just for a delay. Looks like the SI want to head out on this ledge here that they have forced the survivors to go to by scratching open the fire doors. Indeed, and something that is um, important that we should mention here for those viewing that aren't all familiar with Pro Mod and the thing as such. Um, on this map, there's only one Uzi and one shotgun in the safe, and normally there's no T1s or T2s or anything. Normally it's just melees and pistols, but in this config we decided, you know, it's a little bit too hard to fight tank with just melees and pistols. Um, so we dropped a shotgun and an Uzi in there for the survivors to work with. So that is why only two of them have uh, main weapons and the other two have secondaries. Yeah. And with that, I mean, they're going to have to be baiting out a lot more so that they don't just run right into a hit with just only double pistols or a melee weapon out. This is really interesting. Actually, Hunter coming in here going to just... He's trying to save himself. He just about killed himself off the edge and managed to do a few nice wall jumps. He's barely save himself. Start coming up here. There's no charge grab, but the, uh, they definitely want to preserve this last... Okay, Hunter's still trying to not die. Um, Zvaru's so actually doing a really good job at baiting out all these SI here. Uh, I mean, yeah, this is not very looking good for the SI. They don't really have a lot that they can work with at this point. Actually, as I say that, Ellis does get ledge capped. He is the health bonus. They actually opted not to spit on him, which is interesting. I think that they could have actually spat on Ellis and made him bleed out a little bit more so that when he gets picked up, his permanent health 
because that's really what they need to focus on is getting that health bonus down because it's really difficult to secure away from this point on. Indeed, and if anyone that thinks that K3 is a little bit too low, because for some reason it's a little harder on my end to hear you, but if anyone thinks that K3 is a little too low to hear, I can always turn them up, so just let me know. Smoker pulling for Sean the backer. This could easily be a death charge. Oh, Zero Shadow oh. is missing the charge at the window by an inch. Barely missing it, and that will be a Hunter and a Smoker also going in. Smoker getting the scratch down the coach, but that was so close to a death onto Rochelle. Yeah, it was a very nice head to play by the Smoker to get that. Uh, actually, oh, he they actually get the nice, but that's right inside of the elevator. I, uh, Rochelle and Ellis getting a little bit lucky that didn't spread all the way in there, but it did take away some of Ellis' health on us. Anyway, um, so I mean, it was really nice by the Smoker to see that separation and really capitalize on it immediately. Charger, I think, might have. Shit, shit, shit. a little bit though and didn't, wasn't quite ready to line up the death charge perfectly and quite turn out exactly the way that the SI had planned it. Yeah, it was a very good attempt though. It almost worked out. Um, but yeah, so we will see Team Sultans of Suck making their way down the elevator shaft here. They're on the final floor of the map, and uh, pretty much from here on out, they just have to make it to the safe room. But they have quite a long way to actually still go over here. They have to go down this hallway, through the kitchen, through the big fire room. But attack coming in nonetheless. Hunter, Charger, or no, Jockey Charger with the smoke. Two cap is landing. Jockey looking for a latch. Gonna find onto Ellis as well. That's a lot of damage as well. Spitter even running inside the elevator. Gonna get a couple of scratches onto Ellis. And that's another nice chunk of damage taken out of SOS. Yeah, I mean, now Alex has lost basically all of his health bonus. And with that little bonus, at this point, they can't really focus too much on conserving it. They just need to focus on getting the last little bit of distance, because anything does matter to get that full 400. I just see a bit of a scattered SI attack going in here, I think. Hunter's going to get picked there out in the open. Uh, Boomer does get a nice single boom out there, and they actually... Oh, there was a witch that I didn't even know was there. I have no idea where the witch is still. It's so hard to see in here, but I do see the witch now. And it, it, there will be an in-camp going off onto Rochelle, who I do believe that the witch was triggered onto. Um, which didn't really matter because the charger encounter anyway. Uh, so yeah, a bit of a confusing thing to cast there, just because it's so, so difficult to see with the smoke. But, uh, Spire is still making out of there alive. Trust me, I'm even having a hard time actually seeing through the smoke. But uh, regardless, SOS will make their way through the fire room, possibly. Smoker, Hunter, smile back. Hunter does latch onto Alice there, but Smoker also pulling Rochelle back into the fire a little bit, kind of grazing her on the edge of it. But they will go ahead and get back up. But two deaths have gone out on the Soraz as well. In the meantime, Coach and Nick are both dead. And we have a jockey still up after the aftermath of those two deaths. So we'll see if these survivors can actually um, trek their way to the safe room. Yeah, Jockey is almost dead, waiting out in that safe room. Rochelle's gonna go down to that whore in the back, and Elephant is just, I mean, he's just pushing for like two, three extra points maximum at this point. He's gonna get lashed on by that Jockey, and that will be the wipe going out onto Sultans of Suck by Team and Monster Gaming, putting their final score for Chapter 1 to 392 points. So just short of full distance, uh, and I mean, considering, although considering the amount of damage they took, or at the tank, as well as early on in the chapter, I wouldn't be particularly complaining. I think they did a very good job at, uh, with the bleed out, making it all the way to the end. Yeah, they actually did a very good job, as you mentioned. Tank and then the hit in the hallway down below. Um, definitely pushed out a lot of damage onto them. I'm actually surprised they made it. I thought they were, might actually end up wiping, but uh, no, they proved me wrong. And for some reason, my bind's not working. Uh, who knows, but we're good now. So regardless, we are good to go here. I'll go ahead and turn the sound back on for you guys so you don't have to listen to that helicopter the entire time. And yeah. And it respect me again. I, I, the server. The server, though. But regardless, we will see the team switching up here. Nice ski there by Nick through the door. Lust taking out Boomfrag there in one shot. What a shot by Nick. And just like that, this one side down, they still have this tank to trigger, though. And once again, AG over on the survivor half. T attack is coming, though. Jockey Charger making the way up the staircase. Jockey completely getting duped out. Charger does get one, actually, yeah, just one punch, actually, onto Coach. And Spitter going to go in for a quick, quick scratch or two onto them as well. Tank up in the hands of SOS, a boom frag. Yeah, I mean, a little bit of residual trip coming out uh, from the beginning hit. That's generally what you expect to see. Usually not much does land there. Uh, but I mean, I think that there could have been a lot of damage had Lust not gotten that really nice seed. So, uh, very nice play by him. So, I mean, yeah, we do have to tank in the exact same position as the, uh, as the other team. I would honestly commit with this hit, because this is about as good as you're going to get. It's really hard to land a boomer out there, especially since, uh, this 
partners did the right play and had one person not leave the state state room beforehand to keep those spawns blocked. Like Tank is going to do exactly that. Going to get shipped on the way up to the stairs here, on the way to his mid. Um, he's already actually down to about 75% health here. Looking for that corner, is having a lot of trouble finding it. Does get a punch, but hits Rochelle really far away, and Hunter does land on top of that. He actually just missed the punch. Is going to punch Rochelle for god frames, but actually a double charge going into the corner, and a very nice multi-punch off onto uh, Coach and Nick. Uh, he is look, he does look like he's going to find one more punch onto Rochelle, but that's going to be it. As much as that was a really nice double punch um, onto the two guys that went flying, I do think that he, I think he had actually a, a chance for a double corner that he could have gotten two in caps off of. So while that was okay damage, I think it could have been better had his tank chosen his uh, targets a little bit more. Yeah, I agree with you. Once that charger got the two survivors stuck in the corner, I mean, the tank already had one pretty much pinned in there, and then the charger kind of brought the second one to him. But uh, regardless, he could have definitely went on those two survivors that were in the corner, get those quick hits, let the smoker take one more, and uh, just call it a day. But regardless, attack come in here, though. Hunter and Jack both go for Rochelle. Nice melee skeet there by Rochelle. Charger takes Nick off the freaking hotel. What a, what a Hail Mary charger. Wow, what a mistake. Okay, he was, charger was actually going for Rochelle who was juking out all of the SI, and Nick, who is Lust, walks directly into it. Uh, SI didn't actually scratch up the doors, so they are, they are gonna run straight through. But yeah, Nick walking right into a death charge, I guess maybe he didn't yell out that there was a charger charging off the edge, or maybe he just didn't yell quite loud enough to get the message across. Uh, hits going in here, probably not gonna get a whole lot just because it's not a very great setup. Uh, just, yeah, just a little bit of chip, but yeah, I mean, considering the, the tank didn't really get a whole lot off of that, that's a huge death charge and will really help them keep this close coming into the next chapters. Very nice play by them. Indeed, I mean, not only does it X out a lot of the distance that or Nick would have given the team, but it also Xs out one-fourth pretty much of the health bonus because it loses that fourth multiplier, drops it down to a three. So that really is a huge kill regardless of uh, when it happens. It, it really does actually add up here, especially since SOS was not able to make the save from they need every little HB uh, hit that they can get pretty much, and that was a huge hit. Distance and HB absolutely demolished. And so we'll see uh, Team AG making their way down the elevator shaft. There will be a tri-cap, I believe. Yes, it will be. Charger, Hunter, and a jockey, so they have a possibility of ending it. Nice level there by Rochelle right inside the safe room. Spit goes down the top of it. Rochelle will get stuck. Actually, double gap animation a little bit there in the spit. Um, Rochelle will take a little bit more damage there. Rochelle being Ryu, obviously. But she's on health bonus, so that doesn't really matter to her. Yeah, I think Coach took a little bit of damage there, uh, due to the weight of the spit spread inside of the elevator. It's just a thing that you can do. Uh, look, the survivors are pushing up to the witch. They don't see her. They don't see that the witch is right there, and the witch is actually triggered out onto Rochelle, who is unfortunately not health bonus. But that, that could be it. That's another death. Rochelle has also died to that witch, and this could very much be a wipe. Ellis is pulling the back. There's in, in spit. Uh, Co oh, wow. Rochelle actually did die. I don't know how Rochelle is dead yet, because the witch was on top of her for a long time, but it looks like, I mean, if the horde does anything. <laughs> no, the horde is going to walk right through, and they're going to get a free pickup. I don't know how Rochelle didn't die there. The witch was on top of her for a very long time. Yeah, I'm actually a little confused as well. The only real godsend that for Rochelle was that there was actually a, uh, a string of beds with fire kind of surrounding her. So it kind of stopped the coming from getting on top of her, but regardless, attack coming in from behind. Smoker and Hunter, the double cap does land. And the clears will be coming out by Ryu onto the team. Boomer getting popped. And that's going to spit be a split delay at the safe room door. Just trying to bleed out the stars a little bit more. But I mean, look at the health bonus that AG had coming out of the elevator just like uh, maybe a minute ago. And their health bonus right now. Absolutely demolished. All three of them in the red. Nick obviously still dead. And that's going to bring us to a very close game actually. 22 points will be the differential heading into map 2 here. And, uh, I mean, we thought it would be a really close game coming into it, and it looks like it's going to deliver tenfold. Yeah, I mean, Sultans and Stuck did a really great job with their SI. They landed, I mean, pretty much all of their SI landed on, exclusively onto health bonus uh, after they came out of that elevator, able to take it down all the way. And even though they might have not had the survivor uh, rounds that they might have been wanting, they really brought it back on SI and kept this game. I mean, that's in my eyes, that's a tie game. Like 22 points is absolutely nothing. So, I mean, very nicely done by Souls of Suck to keep this game tied going into these next chapters. And it's still anybody's game.
Most certainly. So we will see, obviously, AG starting off on the survivor half. It's really nothing big, though. They're they're barely in the lead. 22 points. Virtually tied, as K3 mentioned. So, But uh, basically, just start off at zero. We're going to the second map. Yep. From the looks of it, it is no really great setup here. Uh... Yeah, I mean, so not a huge amount of damage potential coming off of this first hit. I mean, they'll take what they can get. It looks like tank will be at 51%. Uh, so, I mean, any kind of chip they can get pre-tank is pretty good here. Just because this is this thing's probably going to end up being rather long. Uh, so yeah, I'm interested to see exactly what they're going to do. It's hard to get much damage here, regardless of what setup you have. But, uh, I don't know. Maybe they'll pull something really nice off and prove me wrong. Yeah, I mean, their best hope or best case scenario right now is really just dogpiling one survivor, throwing the boom down to with the Hunter M spit. But regardless, everything going in, Hunter really gets skated. Nice double boom landing on Nick and Ellis. The spit will not hit anybody, though, unfortunately. Actually, Coach drops down inside the spit there. Zero Shadows giving away some of his help on us there, uh, pretty much skipping through the spit. And just like that, the first attack is up and over with Coach pretty much taking the most damage there due to his uh, kind of awareness of where the spit was. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, not only did he drop it this bit, but he also decided to not opt to just run through it, but just to slowly jump Reload. through the spit, taking a decent chunk of damage. Uh, it does not look like there will be a spitter set up this next hit, though, which is not what the SI want to see, because there's really not a whole lot of damage that can happen around the staircase area if you don't have a spit. Our setup for some kind of separation play here, uh, but, I mean, against a team like AG, it's going to be really hard to land anything. Uh, anything worth of any Down significance here. here. Indeed, we will see the hunter pre-spawn around that corner. Alice is currently checking corners for a pre-spawn hunter, and it looks like he might actually be able to find one. The two survivors in the back are currently coming forward. Smoking go for a pull in the back, not gonna find it though. Hunter moving from the front, go looking for Alice or Nick. Finds Nick, jockey getting dead stopped out of there though, though by Alice, and the clear does go on Nick. The clear on the jockey as well, and everything gets absolutely shut down. Boom in the back, destroyed, and that's a dead smoker as well. So attack up and over for AG. A little bit of chip going out on them from that hunter and jockey that very briefly landed on the two survivors. But other than that, AG playing pretty perfectly so far with these attacks. Reloading. Yep, uh, AG really mitigating any damage coming onto them. They do not want to be bleeding heading into the tank. They're still only at 33% uh, into the map so far, at, uh, heading towards that 51% tank. So, I mean, I think the SI have, have at least a couple hits before it runs. Really want to try and find something because they do not want to be getting against four really healthy survivors on the tank. SIR indeed set up, looks like they want to hit on the dumpster cross over that ladder, uh, which I think is a pretty decent spot to hit. But they oh, keep getting less than ideal setups, again with a, a two cap with not very good cappers on top of that either. So I'm not sure if it's because of their sack order or what, but uh, they definitely don't have the setups over that they want. Dumpster. Yeah, I mean, they definitely don't want these 2-2s to continually show up here. But regardless, we will see the Hunter bouncing in, looking for a little bit of distraction here. Boomer dropping down behind the stars, lands a single boom on to or Alice, I should say. And everything else getting really shut down. Spitter not having anything to land on, obviously, because the Jockey and Hunter are absolutely demolished. And uh, that will be the attack up and over with. AG doing a really good job, but then SOS also kind of threw that attack in at a really weird time. They threw it in when everyone was pretty much backing away from the opening there. And uh, it really put the Boomer in a really bad position. And then the SI also had a very long way to run in, obviously. Yeah. Uh, team Age, you really not letting any of these hunts. Uh, as well as they're less than not done. Uh, that's like, they just serve from what I've seen. And I think that this, uh, the Oscar team has paused it because of it. Yeah, I was wondering. Um, I have actually been subject to a few little DDoS uh, sessions here when I played on this particular server. Uh, so, I mean, yeah, it is definitely a thing that can happen. Hmm. Um, I mean, it looks like the pings are down, at least on my side it is. So, <laughs> hopefully this won't be lasting very long and won't have much of an effect on the game. Uh, so, yeah. A little bit of DDoS delaying us a little bit. Yeah, hopefully it goes away. I, I don't know why people still do that stuff in this day and age, but I mean, regardless, whatever floats your boat. But yeah, so we will wait for the teams to uh, feel that they are ready, and then we'll get this game back and away for you guys. Once again, sorry for the delays. Um, not something that normally happens often anymore, as I said, but unfortunately, it's still a thing. Yeah. Uh, I mean, 
so just talking about the actual game instead of uh, outside of the DDoS that's going on. Uh, again, day three. We might oh, have lost. Suck. Not having a very ideal setup here. Are you still there? Can you hear me? Yeah, I am still here. Oh, you like stopped talking for a second. And I was like, K three. <laughs> okay, because I mean, I was just I just kept talking on and on, and I was trying to check the tank percentage, but it wasn't go through. So I think I had some kind of weird lag spike. But it is at forty eight percent, so it looks like the survivors will not have to drop down in order to spawn the tank, or at least I mean, if they do, it's going to be not in a very good position for the survivors, considering that they're going to have to run towards the car it, uh, that the tank can hit in order to get to anywhere safe. So, I mean, with this setup, we could be looking at a pretty decent attack to hit on the tank spawn. So I'm interested to see exactly how that's going to play out. Yeah, I mean, once again, obviously, as you mentioned, it's going to give the SI quite a good hit here on the run back. Um, but yeah, it's really going to come down how well as far as can actually take that hit. The tank probably won't be in any good position to commit right away. But with that being said, we are going live here with the game. Once again, survivors are about to take on the tank here. And it looks like there are three really good SI as well up here for this drop hit. Um, that's even if the survivors do have to drop, which, as we mentioned, I don't think they'll have to actually. I know, it looks like they whip. Yeah, I mean, they're only at 50%, and if one of the, if a single one of them drops down uh, onto that trailer, then all of them have to drop. It's no return, unless they find some kind of crazy common hop. But we're actually going to get an interesting uh, single boom from the bottom. Uh, I'm thinking he might be tank, and just trying to get himself a little bit of boom beforehand. Otherwise, I mean, I would think that you'd want to save the boomer for when they're actually committing to the drop. Actually, SI opting to go in here, had they had a spitter, I think that would have been a really nice play because that was a very good double charge, as well as that proxy boom. But now they have absolutely nothing to play on this uh, drop here, and the survivors are going to be able to push away from this car and get into a much better position uh, than they would have had had they had to take another hit here. So, yeah, I mean, I'm not exactly sure what the SI were going for there. Indeed, so the attack is up and over with. The survivors are actually getting aggressive. A nice rock there under a shell by the hands of Dr. Poof, or Dr. Doof, I should say. Um, playing the tank here for Team Solons of Suck. SI attack is looking like it's come back up, though. Tank has already taken 1,200 HP chip, though. So uh, he's got to play a little bit more passive here as the SI get ready for this commit, I'm guessing. It's got to be a commitment. I don't see him actually playing rock tank here all that long. No, I mean, with that SI hit that went down, uh, the survivors had a free push and where it was just put on so much chip onto the tank, he really didn't have much that he could do about it. On the second pass, it looks like tank will have to go in here. Uh, his SI setup is, a, is pretty solid, but we do have Rochelle all the way on top of the SI from that, because Rochelle is Rochelle's super separated. I was going to do that out though. Tank's having a lot of trouble with this car. This car is not going anywhere at all. Actually, oh my god, actually taking the car all the way to the top, landing on top of Zero. It looks like he wants to find this kill or something. That was a crazy car hit. I'm not sure if that was on purpose. Yeah, that or wasn't. Not, but crazy car hit. Yeah, I mean, he aimed up there, so I'm assuming that was on purpose, but regardless, it does end up crashing down on top of Zero Shadows. So that will be a free end cap there due to the hit will hitting him. And, uh, I mean, AG still in good position, though, after the tank. They have th two survivors with really high green bonus. Uh, Grizz as well, sitting in the 40s right now with his health bonus. He's actually on the brink of going slow, though. I believe he's actually... Is he at 40 exactly? Yeah, he's at 40 exactly. So one more little tick of damage will put him into slow range, a.k.a. yellow. But regardless, we will see AG making the way across the highway. Boomer going out on the coach in the front here. And it looks like all the SI are going to spawn but underneath the stairwell. Smoke is spawning from the dumpster. Actually, going to grab that pull onto him. That is going to cause a little bit of separation. Now, the Hunter and Smoke Spitter are trying to work together. And they do work together just fine on the coach. Going to push out a lot more damage onto Zero Shadows. Committing the last set of pills. Actually, no, I lied. They had three more sets of pills. I don't even know why I said that. Huh. Side, <laughs> yeah, I mean, although that didn't go out onto health bonus, I am questioning the amount of separation that was uh, going on on team AG side. Uh, they did have to go through a whole set of pills there, but I mean, yeah, AG is still setting at a massive 716 bonus, and really that tank fight really dictates exactly the difficulty of this next event, and generally if you don't take a lot of damage during the tank, this event isn't that difficult to deal with, and so they're really going to have to pull off a very impressive hit in order to uh, lower the health bonus and make le less of a deficit that they need to come back from. Yeah, I mean, definitely, as you mentioned, 
Um, the SI have kind of one good opportunity for a hit, and it's when the survivors actually push inside of the shopping center here. Um, whether or not that lands is really just how well they can get the jump of the survivors, whether they can position themselves right, and what. Oh, Michael Jordan comment. Regardless, though, the survivors are making their way towards the save for less shopping center. Coach is going to go ahead and break down the door. It looks like the survivors are actually not going to find an attack here until they exit this, the building. Or the SI are coming from behind. Actually, yes, they are. Smoker Charger working together. Nice level to Mike Nick, though. Going to shut down that Charger. Ryan distracts. Jockey Gang does have to wait and shut down by Alice in the background there. Zero Shadows already having the Coke as well. So they're already on the way back out of saving or save for less. Yeah, I'm a big fan of attacking. What a demon, Mike. Inside. Holy crap. Oh my god, that sent chills down my spine. <laughs> Holy I'm crap. So <laughs> I'm sorry to everyone that hears that on the stream. <laughs> Holy crap! No, I'm gonna. Have, I guess I'm gonna have to go back and watch that odd. Oh, uh, give me tingles. That's good, dude. Anyway, uh, so I am kind of questioning the hit on the inside there. I'm not a big fan of that. Actually, they do find a really nice separation to so Rochelle. Rochelle is caught on the on the tree though, so will not be going all the way down. And they do find a actually hunt and split on the health bonus on the bottom. So actually. Soldiers have stuck finding a lot of damage on the health bonus over these last couple of hits. Uh, they managed to reduce it by over 200 points, which is really good. Uh, they want to be able to not be down by some, too much of a significant portion uh, going into chapter 3, or at least they're still after round. I got another pull going out onto Rochelle, so Rochelle, who is great, is not being able to find any break from these smokers. Uh, so while I think the SI have hit in a couple of slightly questionable spots, they have been able to take a lot of damage off of it, so it definitely has been worth it. Yeah, so we will see AG making the way past the event here. They've blown up Tankard, and we'll see Coach kind of clearing the way up ahead. Once again, he's not health bonus, so he doesn't really care what happens to him. He just doesn't want to eat a charge or a hunter split it pretty much. And so I was looking like they're going to curve way out here to the right, over to the cars. And the attack is coming in. Jockey and Desktop and kill off the, shot, uh, the Hunter and Charger just as well. Getting absolutely destroyed upon showing themselves past the bush there. And it looks like the survivors will be encountering a one final uh, uh, hurdle here in their way. And it's going to be that witch. The running crown. Nick misses it. Ryu dropping all of his health bonus to that single mess up. Why? Okay, I don't know why you need to go for the Sal run crown in that situation. That almost gave the SI a full another hit to attack onto the Lust, too. So, I mean, I, that's actually a really big witch miss, considering the amount of health bonus that, they, that uh, Nick had just there. That just about halves their health bonus straight down the middle uh, with that witch in cap. So, and this puts. Uh, it's also some second, definitely a better position, much better position than they would have been in had Nick just taken the safe crown and then just walked right into the safe room. So, I'm stuck down by less than a thousand on this very large chapter where I have seen some very large health bonuses coming out of. So, so now, they definitely within their realm of possibility uh, to make a comeback on this map. Indeed, and we'll see if Sultans of Suck can actually make that happen and come to fruition as they look to uh, make the saving here, obviously, on their survivor half of map 2 of Dead Center. Once again, guys, welcome to the really big Promod tournament number 3. If you guys are newcomers, we're in round 5, or the group stage 5, I should say, of the tournament, and you're watching Sultans of Suck over on your survivor half, going up against Team Animosity Gaming on your SI. And, uh, yeah, this is definitely going to be a close game. They were 22 points differential coming into this map, and we'll see uh, what the differential is at the very end of it. Yeah, so again, not a very long setup for the SI um, on this beginning hit. Not a lot came out of the first hit for uh, Team Sultans to suck, and hoping to not take much damage coming off of the hit from AG. Yeah, I mean, so they really want to get into a sick position as they, uh, as the, in terms of survivor play around when the tank was, because uh, I mean the tank really, it didn't look like it was going to get anything at all until that big car hit landed. If that car didn't land then it would have been a, pretty much a full on shutdown of the tank. So the survivors definitely want to put themselves in a similar position so they can replicate that kind of performance. Most certainly. I mean, it looks like the will push out safe from the Boomer and the Smoker. Actually, everything good dogpiling on top of Boomfrag. This is going to be a target for this hit, and they're going to do actually quite a bit of damage to the Boomfrag, dropping around 30 HP there on that first hit, so not too shabby at all. Um, kind of a lucky stumble, actually, on Rochelle. I don't know how the Boomer actually 
managed to push her with the proxy towards the spit. But regardless, it did happen, and she got stumbled into the spit, obviously. So she's going to drop a little bit of health bonus from that. And as far as they are looking to make some quick uh, distance here on the map, already making the way up to the doorway, leading to a stairwell that leads them below the highway or the overpass, if you will. And uh, Boomer actually spawning up on the other side, opposite of where the police car used to be. And there will be a jockey spawning up outside as well. Gets dead stopped there by Coach, and it's going to be a quick kill on that. Hunter as well getting dead stopped and killed off. And SOS making some quick work of these first two SI hits. I mean, besides that Boomer stumble and spit, they haven't landed anything. Yeah, I mean, now it's looking like very similar damage compared to. Uh... In fact, or maybe even better performance compared to what AG has done uh, at this point in the map. Still a couple of strong hits. In fact, I mean, Spivs actually are moving pretty slowly. And while I think they could have been outside towards uh, the end of this tunnel for this hit, they're going to be underneath. We will give the survivors an, uh, another choke point that they're going to have to take here. Uh, but I mean, if they can keep replicating the shutdowns that they've had over the first two hits, it shouldn't be a worry at all because it'll just demolish all the SI. Definitely. So we'll see how long it takes for the survivors to actually decide to move out from their shelter and expose themselves to the skies above. But for the hit, it's going to be a boomer, hunter, spitter, and a jockey. So another 2 2. We're seeing a lot of 2 2 so far in this map for both sides, actually. It's kind of weird. But regardless, SOS getting a little ballsy here, moving out. Nice double boom landing onto two survivors. The two middle survivors, that hunter looking like he wants to grab one of those survivors in the back, but he will get dead stopped. Spitter as well, not going to have anything to work with, obviously, because that hunter got shut down. And that's another ace hit there from SOS. And that's pretty much three attacks in the row. They've taken no damage. I mean, once again, the only real damage you can actually uh, allocate here would be towards Rochelle, and that was because she got stumbled in that weird way by the boomer. Yeah. SOS doing a very amazing job with their M2s. For the last two hits in, in a row, they did stop both the Hunter and the Jockey. Uh, so that definitely has both a shutdown effect as well as a psychological effect on the SI once they get M2'd a lot. Actually, a very nice beat on the Jockey coming out there. They're just going to get a couple of nice punches uh, on uh, the guy who smoked. But then the beat on the Jockey uh, by Dark Hunter, who was uh, indeed smoked at the time. That was really good, and it could have prevented potentially a lot of uh, even more damage that came out of that. So while that was still pretty decent damage for the uh, SI there, nobody's bleeding. They have, uh, I mean, obviously Fort has a pill still. None of them is even close to going slow. So I think they're in very good position in order to take this tank well. Yeah, I actually think they could most certainly make it past this tank. It really ends up with how they end up positioning themselves on the tank. This. If they drive down towards the highway, they really do leave themselves open to that car in the head of all, obviously. But regardless, tank actually does spawn up here. They haven't all dropped just yet, and now they do. There's going to be a huge horde crashing into them, pretty much. This tank is going to go and commit with his hitable. If I can get to the POV of him hitting it towards the survivors, that's going to separate the survivors quite a bit here. And the tank has them separated with the hitable. He's going to push it back into it. The jockey also bringing Ellis towards the hitable. That should be an instantaneous kill, pretty much, onto Ellis. And the tank was getting in the hands of Lust here. There is a charger who landed on the survivors in the back, who gets cleared off. Boomer still up, looking for a reboom here. Going to drop down towards Coach. Going to get the proxy and freeing up the hunter. Beautiful car hit by Lust onto Coach. And that's going to be a double end cap coming up by Lust so far with this tank. Rock crashing into her shell's face. Car! Car! Oh my god! Is that going to fall on her? Oh, it almost hit it almost her shell. It actually falls backwards. But Tank still putting a work here. It still has 3,500 HP left. Coach taking a lot of damage there. Alice as well. They're both on the brinks of actually dying off here. Coach, in fact, is about to die off. He has barely any down HP left. Smoker pulling Nick here. And this could actually be a wipe on the team. SOS. Lust getting a little lost there. But Nick going to go ahead and take another punch there for the team. And this is the last survivor up here for Team LOS. Rochelle, aka Boomfrag, eats a rock. But I don't think he's going to kill Lust here. 1,500 HP left on this Tank. And I, it, she's all alone. Another curve rock. Not even needed. But just for flare effect, Charger going in, and uh, he's actually going to end it. Going to land that charge, and that will be the wipe onto Team Asso here by Team AG. Yeah, um, if you want to know the main difference between those two SI players were, one team saved the hit for the drop to keep him from pushing into a safe location. The other team did not. And so you can really see the effect of that boomer dropping and getting that one boom. All the SI uh, support being able to prevent them from getting away from the car onto Ellis. The tank's still at over 75% health. It really just put them in an almost impossible to recover bot. I think it was just some um, better decision making from AG's uh, side on their SI, saving that hit and making sure that the survivors can't position themselves to where they want to fight the tank. AG, was, AG saw their survivor side, exactly what can happen 
uh, to a tank when you fight them in exactly where you want to in that area. That yeah. was all that came out of it, so. Yeah, I mean, as you mentioned, just really, it could even come down to experience. Um, SOS getting a little too antsy there with the RSI attack at the drop, and obviously they threw it in before AG even dropped down, so they were able to completely negate that attack and push the tank before you could get to the hitable to really pose much of a threat to them. And obviously with the SI down as well, AG didn't really fear it. So uh, it could have been experience, maybe just a misplay or a miscall by SOS. Uh, they thought maybe the tank spawned or something of that nature. But regardless, AG will be in the lead here going into map 3, and your scores will be 1,306 to 688. So around 700 points difference coming into here. Um, definitely still doable for a team SOS. We got two full maps ago. We will be seeing finale played as well. Um, but regardless, we will be seeing the game go live here. AG on your survivor half, obviously, with Team SOS over on the SI to start things off. And I'll let you take it away. Yeah, 618 is not too big of a thing to come back from, especially on a really crucial map that can give out a ton of health bonus like this, on top of 700 distance points. Uh, relatively early tank, too, which will help them out. Uh, so, again, no spitting on this opening hit, so... But, I mean, there is still a lot of damage that they can get here if they... Land a nice boom. So we're actually looking for that stuff. Get it. Gonna get shut down there, Rialis. Uh, Jock is gonna get M2 shut down there, and Charger's gonna just go between everybody and get shut down. Single proxy boom going on to Ellis, but other than that, that is zero damage on the board. Uh, for Team SOS, very nicely shut down. So while it's hard to get much damage there with that opening hit, uh, it's uh, harder for the survivors to make sure that zero damage happens. So nicely done by them. Indeed, and we will see another attack looking to happen here very shortly. Actually, it looks like they are trying to all grab spawns. It's going to be a Smoker, a Charger, a Spitter, and a Hunter. So a 3-1 with the Spitter, so a potential for a lot of damage if either the Hunter or Charger can There's a Charge, there's a Pre-Spit as well. That's going to be a lot of damage we push on, on Nick. This Hunter's actually going to go in as well onto Nick, but actually gets dead stopped as Nick goes in for the gather animation, and that's a crap ton of damage onto Ryu. That really is a testament just to how much Pre-Spit actually does affect there. And I mean, obviously, the SI were also going in there for scratches as well, the Smoker and the Spitter there, and Ryu being push all the way down to around 25 HP there to start things off. And really, just an amazing hit there. Yeah, very much so. I'm lagging a little bit, so apologize if I do go into a robotic mic uh, occasionally. But we do have this tank up here in the hands of Dark Country on this uh, map 3 of uh, Dead Center. So uh, this is a very crucial tank right now. And this is, a, this is also a very difficult spot for the SI to get a lot of damage here. The survivors can just kite all the way around. There is no SI ladders to get onto those top balconies. So... I mean, if the survivors do a good job at mitigating the number of spawns that the SI can take, uh, I mean, this tank could end up getting really shut down. So it's all up to the tank to be able to find something. Uh, and in fact, most of the times I see much damage coming off the tank, it's off the survivor misplays. So definitely not the tank spawn that uh, Team SOS wants to see here. Yeah, most certainly. And once again, this tank is incredibly hard to actually get any real good damage with it. It really comes down to SI. Pretty much survivors just pretty much circle the upper area here. And it's really hard to get good spawns. But actually, Ellis walking right into the tank's line of sight there. Gonna get instantly actually hit on top of the fence. Gonna drop back down and it's gonna be a free end cap there on to Lust. I guess there's a little bit of good sportsmanship there by him. He knew he shouldn't be up there to begin with, so he dropped down to give the tank the corner. But Dark Hunter all alone right now. I, I think that Jockey even got killed off. Indeed it did. So Dark Hunter with 2200 HP left. Gonna be forced to try and land some sort of Hail Mary curve rock here, but he's just getting absolutely chipped down by these Uzis. Yeah, he's getting shot through the wall there. I, I actually think Lutz just kind of split off of that top spot there, um, off of that punch, because I don't think he, uh, he could actually fit all the way up there. I mean, I could be wrong, but whatever. Anyway, I mean, honestly, one and cap, I wouldn't be complaining about that for uh, if I were a team SOS. That's pretty solid. Although the SI didn't land for a lot, I think, and I think if they did, it would have really added up to a lot more damage. Uh, but I mean, I think nobody actually hit coming in here. It's, yeah, nothing is going to really land off this, to be honest. Uh, but yeah, I think it was just none of the survivors knew where the tank was, and the tank snuck all the way up the escalator without taking any chip at all and less walking right into it, showing that their air awareness wasn't quite on point when that tank was committing. So, nice job by the tank, finding that perfect window of opportunity and securing that good in cap onto the health bonus. Indeed, we'll see another attack coming in, though. The Jockey immediately getting shut down. Smoker as well after landing upon the neck. Hunter does manage to find a, a land onto Rochelle. Nice double boom as well, landing. But that will be the extent of the attack, I believe. Um, a little bit of horde damage trickling out here onto Nick as he gets a little caught up there with the common and such. But Team AG going to be able to make their way up ahead here. Yep. Uh, for those who do not know, in Pro Mod, 
uh, you cannot go to the left hand side here. It is blocked by those vending machines 100% of the time. Uh, they decide to make the map a little bit harder by making the survivors go all the way down to the bottom and through the alarm doors uh, every time that they play through this map. Removes a little bit of the randomness and adds a little bit more challenge. Considering that most of the tank spawns here aren't too hard to take, as you just noticed, that even with that early in cap, the survivors still came out of that with a ton of health bonus to reserve that coming into this next uh, event. And I mean, three or so hits are re is really going to dictate what kind of health bonus uh, Team AG comes out of this map with. There's a big spit hit that comes up here before the event, or kind of when they started, and then there's maybe another one at the top of the escalator if they're fast enough, out of the uh, in room. And that's pretty much all there is in terms of significant hits that the SI can get from here on out in the map. Indeed, and it looks like the survivors have finally made their way to the emergency door here. Once they open this door, the event, the normal event, will start, and then they will be pretty much on the bottom floor of the atrium and have to work their way all the way back up. And there we go, Ellis starting the event here. SI dropping down, nothing land though. Even the smoker getting into the way by Ellis there, and the charge of even be able to land a single punch onto Ellis as well. Ellis single-handedly shutting down the entire attack for the most part, and he'll be the forefront man here for Team AG as they make their way in the beginning of the event here. Yep. Uh, so I mean, considering that they're all gonna be fast, except for maybe Nick if he's out in time. Uh, I think SI are going to be out for this escalator hit, at least partially. Else is smartly running up though, uh, trying to take all those spawns away. Looks like SI are gonna be forced to actually go in here, looking for that pull up, going to find it. He's actually in a spot where he does fall all the way down. He's gonna lose that last bit of health bonus and put him and put Nick slow. Um, that would have been a lot bigger had it been on one of the bigger health bonuses. Uh, though. It is a very nice play by the smoker getting that pull off. K3, we're going to find out why your mic does that. The demon yes, thing? We're going to find out. Did it do it again just now? Yeah. I'm just saying we're Personally. going to find out why. Regardless of the witch is being drawn here, I'm not too sure by which survivor though, but the witch is currently running at the survivors. I think it might have been Rochelle, but Coach, and, well, not actually was Coach, and he lands the easy draw crown there. Smoker and Spitter doing work on a fearsome force them. They're going to down Ryu. And that will be a nice end cap, even though the witch did get shut down. That's still a nice chip of damage, or a bit of damage, as to say. And Sarah's so will have a little bit of a grace period here in this horde, as uh, they do pick up Nick here, and make their ways towards the event. But I don't actually know if this event ever ends. I'm pretty sure this no, is still not... continuous. No, it's it's infinite until you turn off the button. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, Alex was super, super separated there for a second. He did the uh, he want look like he wanted to go turn off the button while they were getting pick up. Uh, but nice. I think it was definitely smart to turn back because I guess I were getting respawns up and he didn't want to get jogged all the way forward and then boomed on and then die. That would have been very bad for Team AG. Looks like there will not be a spitter after this hit, which is very good for Team AG. Very hard to get much damage here without a spitter. Actually, looking for that charge off, um, it does get shut down by Team AG. Looks like it wouldn't have landed anyway because it was heading straight towards that plant. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it, Team AG really mitigating any damage that comes off. Of uh, comes up, coming on to the health bonus right now, and they are sitting at an almost 600 point health bonus with really not too many difficult hits to take yet uh, towards the safe room. So while they will, there will be two slow survivors making them take maybe three more hits until they reach the safe room, there's not a ton of damage potential coming out of the next few hits, so I'm interested to see what Team SOS is going to make out of it. Yeah, I mean, as we see, both Ryu and Lust are both on one in capsule so far, so no clear sign of a death happening here for Team AG just yet. But uh, we could definitely see one still come out here, and that would be pretty much the equivalent of knocking out one of the main health bonuses that are remaining for Team AG. So they got to keep Ryu away from that. He's almost on the brink of taking an in cap here, which will send him black and white and put him in that zone, actually. But uh, we will see just how well AG can play defensive here and keep him out of that situation. As they make their way down the final long hallway here, all they have to do is pretty much make their way back up upstairs and then into the safe room, obviously. I'm sure many of you that are watching actually know this map since it's also the first campaign and Reloading. people really like this map for some reason in public versus. Reloading. I'm not too sure why. Yeah, it's this and uh, No Mercy, definitely the favorites by public versus players. Do you have an in-cap going up onto Nick by the survivors down him? Uh, very nice level coming out by Lust. Uh, onto that charger. Smoker didn't get a whole lot onto health bonus, maybe like one tick of damage, and Jockey, I believe, got shut down. So I do agree with the survivor, with the SI in terms of going in there on the in cap onto Nick, who is black and white now, but did find his other pills. Uh, but it was just very nice 
play by this virus, shutting all those inside down and preventing any kind of crazy tri cap shenanigans, ruining their chances at a big health bonus. Now the gap is very much widening, and the SI need to make some kind of really huge play, lest they go down by, like, <laughs> of just, I mean, way too many points now. It's gonna be very hard to come back from this. And yeah. Just, yeah, I mean, just like that, the entire attack is over and done with. Lus is on the brink of actually going to 1 HP here, though, so the SI will most likely have another hit here up before they make their way to safe room. But regardless, we'll see AG make somewhat quick work here. And uh, Lust all the way in the front here, trying to make as much room as he can, or as much uh, distance as he can before taking that 1 HP penalty. And indeed, he is down to that marker right now. So he's going to actually crouch his way to the safe room. The attack is going to be the smoke a charger. We're looking for the charge. Do land the charge, but there's no spit to actually complement that charge. And Incap does also land out on Dallas there. And Hunter, unfortunately, latching onto him as well. Boomer popped. And that will be the final hit, I believe. Four team at Sultans of Suck. Down and over with. AG throwing the bile out just for uh, and a little bit of assault to that wound. And they're going to walk away in the safe room with a 700, no, a 500 health bonus, excuse me. So not too bad at all. 500 is nothing to, uh, you know, just push under the rug. That's quite a nice health bonus for this map. They do have two survivors that are black and white, so that does obviously affect it in a negative way a little bit. But regardless, they will be moving into the second half here with uh, quite a high standing. Yep, 500 health bonus. It's, it's well, it's a lot. It's definitely not the most impossible to map in terms of uh, bonus for this map. Just especially considering that the tank on this map, uh, the tank spawn that they have, is not the hardest to take. So I do believe that Solar Sun can definitely match it. It's just hey, how do you make up an extra 618 points on top of that? Uh, that's where the most difficulty comes in because comebacks on the finale. Uh, they do happen, and the one did come out here earlier uh, in the Fudge Boys versus uh, we met on eHarmony team. Uh, I believe that was yesterday. And uh, but it, I, it's a it's a rarity, and you generally don't see those kind of finale comebacks. So it's really up to SOS here to do a very nice performance on their survivor side, trying to keep the gap as small as possible. Because they're down by almost 2k points, and they really need to make something big happen. Indeed. So we'll see if they can actually make the save from it. And if they do, what kind of health bonus they can bring in tow with them. And uh, we'll see SOS on the survive half once again. AG on the SI. And SOS just playing nice and slow, really. Taking their time, shutting down all the common that are outside the safe room so that they don't run into them um, by accident as this attack does progress it to make its way in into the survivors. And yeah, it looks like they are just kind of standing there now, though. They're kind of just like, this is their baiting technique. And now they rush out. They go for the quick block on the spawns. They do block the boom, but he still parks it down to the coach, unfortunately. The jockey and charger also landing their hits. So that's going to be a nice chip and spread of damage onto two survivors there. Both Alice and Rochelle taking quite a bit of damage there. Yeah, it looks like Coach and Nick were a little bit confused as to who was going off to clear what, and so they kind of did a bit of zigzagging, which allowed the turn to get a full slam onto Rochelle, as well as the Jockey to get a nice 32 damage out onto Ellis, taking him very far away. So that is very solid damage, definitely above average damage for an opening setup like that, for that first hit. Nice job by AG. They, uh, Spiders do actually find a set of pills. I think it's questionable taking them right now, though, considering that the tank is about to be up. Uh, but I mean, I guess it kind of depends on where this virus chooses to take this tank. We do have another hit set up though. <laughs> Smoke is looking like he's just going to get picked. Hunter's right, coming in here, uh, most likely he's not going to find a whole lot. Actually, he does find a pounce onto Rochelle, but gets cleared pretty quickly. Smoke is still having trouble finding anything. Charger got absolutely shut down. That's going to be a very nice shutdown by Team SOS onto AG, making sure that they don't take any more damage coming up onto this tank fight. Yeah, I mean, if SOS can take this tank really well. This could definitely still be a turnaround map here for SOS in of itself. Because if they can make the safe room with the 8 900 health bonus, pretty much they cut the lead in half going into the final map. And it'll be like a 300 and some odd point difference going into it. But needless of that, another hit coming in here though. SOS really slowed down there after the last hit. And they're going to need another hit here at pretty much the exact same location. Double boom going out on the two survivors. Hunter work his way in. Does land a pass out onto Rochelle. Charging like a nice double charge out to Nick and Ellis there. So that's going to be another nice chunk of damage. And SOS, I don't know why they started moving so slowly there after they descended the uh, escalators there. Yeah, I think they would have been able to take the escalators for free off of that uh, other hit that shut down. In fact, I think Coach was also reloading 
So it allowed the charge to get a full slam out onto Nick. It's a ton of damage, but it's also very a lot of damage spread between the survivors. Uh, and so I'm now they really have to play pretty much picture perfectly on this tank. Then he encaps. Actually, Rock almost landing onto Coach. Uh, but this tank here is up in the hands of Grizz. So it's, that's going to be an exceptionally difficult tank to shut down. Uh, and which is exactly what they need to do. They cannot really afford to take much damage on this, or else they're going to end up going down to probably a pretty big deficit going into map four. Indeed. We'll see a tank up in the hands of Grizz here. Obviously a crowd favor. We'll see what he can actually make happen here. Looks like he's going to go ahead and run up the left escalator. No, switching his mind. Actually going to push up the right one instead. Nope, switching back to the left yet again. Grizz juking even the casters out. It looks like he's going to go and make his way up. But jumping over the side of the escalator. Taking already 2,000 damage worth of chip though, unfortunately. Smoker looking for a pole. Going to go ahead and throw Nick into the corner here. Rock missing the stars actually. But he's going to go ahead and land a single punch out onto Coach. The two cappers have managed to land in the back there, though. Another rock latching onto Rochelle as well. And this could easily be a wipe. The two stars in the back are still obviously capped. And this could definitely be a wipe here. Another rock landing on a coach. Then one more punch will put him down. There it is. Yeah, and Rochelle is all alone yet again. And there's a charger just as it mirrors in the last half of the last map for SOS. Just the charger, the tank, Rochelle last one up. And that will be the wipe going on at Team SOS yet again, giving them 167 distance. No Witch Crown, obviously, for the map because they didn't encounter it. And that's going to put the total scores at 2,526 to 855. So at this point, it's looking pretty bleak for SOS. Um, mathematically, it's coming up on impossible, if not already there. Yeah, so, I mean, just going over that tank fight, it. So Grizz made a pretty interesting uh, and smart play. He, what he wanted to do is he baited out the ship from a distance Anybody on the other, the on the far escalator, guys? so that he took very little going up, and because the survivors were re reloading as he was going up the, the closer escalator. He did get caught on a little something, uh, trying to jump over, and it took about 2k chip, and I, at that point I thought that the tank was not going to actually get a whole lot, but that very nice 2 cap landing in the back, and Grizz did a very amazing job at uh, zoning the survivors, and blocking off any shots that they could have gotten to clear those, which, I mean, once they got to a certain point, it was pretty much guaranteed that they were going to secure the two deaths onto uh, Rochelle and Ellis, who were slipped in the back, and then uh, just allowed the tank as, as well as the charger to just clean up the rest. So very nicely played by them, uh, securing that wipe and making this nearly, making this nearly an impossible comeback on this finale. Mathematically possible, uh, I... I think, yeah, I mean it's mathematically possible, but it's nearly impossible, so in all likelihood we will see Team AG coming out with the win here, uh, just because they played very fantastically on that last chapter mostly. We actually do see a jockey coming out onto Ellis, who is separated in the front, and a 2 cap going out on the back, that is a massive tri cap. But that is two in caps that's going to be coming out onto Rochelle and Nick who are in the back, as well as some good ship coming out onto Lust. So, that was actually an amazing you ever see coming out of an opening hit out of the safe room here. So, I mean, full more hits like that, and the survivors will be actually just flat out dead, which will give a bit of a window of opportunity to Team SOS. But they need to replicate that kind of SI performance again and again to an absolutely picture perfect survivor play. So, unfortunately, that kind of SI play is mostly a little too late. Uh, managed to pull off some more that would be really amazing to see yeah most certainly and that one's gonna that was a really really nice hit coming out there from sos even though this game might be a little bit too far out of the reach at this point in time that that really shows that they're not out of it just yet they're not willing to give up they're gonna make ag fight for every single point here even if it's kind of futile at this point but regardless as far as making the way down that later shaft towards which tank is up now so they have to take out this witch relatively soon and there we go the witch makes his way and actually she glitches out right in the doorway of the elevator but another cap going out under rochelle as well a charger oh even God. oh chill Charger kidding another cap that's two black and white survivors lust even taking or being taken down into the red HP range and this tank is somewhere he's actually above them yeah that is the big glitch happened inside the elevator in fact he's gonna find the commit that's gonna be a death on the zero right away unless he misses he actually misses the punch but it does secure the death on the zero after wasting that set of pills <laughs> that's a death already and looks like this tank actually 
Dude, is actually almost done to HP, but is gonna find that uh, hit on to uh, Ryu, who is now separated. But does get cleared to the ball there, but that does what he's gonna get incapped. And now this is almost 50% HP against two survivors. Uh, and I mean, it's Grizzly Mus, so obviously I, they can pull us out, but this is the kind of SI play that you really want to see uh, coming out of uh, this team. Finding a punch onto Grizz there, uh, he, and he is going to bleed out to slow in just a second there, and he does not have pills. So, I mean, this could very much turn into a wipe here at any second. In fact, Boomer looking is going to find a boom onto Neck, trying to secure that other kill, and uh, Hunter looking for that pounce onto Grizz, getting some separation. So, coming out onto Ellis in the back, that's going to get cleared by, very nicely by Grizz, and I mean, okay, Tank looks like he's going to die here, but I mean, the survivor is obviously not coming out of that unscathed. And I'm thinking that they're not going to be getting too many games. And then after an amazing performance like that. Yeah, I mean, even after this tank, even when it does die, it's probably not going to be able to secure the white pair, though. But as you mentioned, what a hell of a tank. A nice rock there Ooh. latching on to Rochelle. Going to actually delay the pickup as well. Charger latching on else. He could end this right now if he were to commit on Rochelle and catch her out of position. If you want right now, he can actually lock it up. He's going to go ahead and actually locks up Alice instead. But the Charger got cleared, unfortunately. So that's going to be a dead tank. Tank had a little bit of opportunity there, but I understand that he wasn't able to get in there because Rochelle was actually so far away from the doorway. Um, pretty much three shots from the shotgun would have ended him. And that will be also a dead hunter as well, getting skied out of there, there by the survivors. And once again, Zero Shadow's dead. That was a hell of an elevator hit. Like, what a demolishing first two hits there from SOS. Literally killed yeah. off a survivor and put another one into black and white. Yeah, I mean, that is absolutely about as amazing amazing SI play as you're going to see. They did get the spit, which did spread all the way into it, which secured another in cap, and this charger just came up and put two of them black and white. Zero catching absolutely no breaks, going in cap two hits in a row, and immediately after getting picked up, just getting picked off and killed by the tank. Uh, so as far as are trying to get these last few, or at least a couple cans in to raise their uh, score differential a little bit more. Uh, but I mean, yeah, I mean, if... <laughs> If we saw SOS playing with this kind of SI play throughout the whole game, they definitely would have won this. Uh, in uh, at least as far as I could tell, they. I think. I mean, <laughs> that was just absolutely stellar. Getting those. Uh, I mean, a death off of the first three hits, as well as pretty much two end caps. And now survivors are. They have exhausted all of their pills, and they're bleeding out with perma slow. I think that's about all the cam they're going to be getting in before they die off at this point. Yeah, I mean, every single try cap at this point in time really does pose a huge threat, bigger than normal. Charger going in gets a punch on Alice, but does get killed off, though. The Smoker lashing onto Rochelle down below, going to keep a little bit of separation here, that being that Hunter. And Rochelle will actually be end up killing or being killed off by that Smoker. So good play there by the SI. Just whittling down at the survivors inch by inch. And that's going to be another two cans that the survivors look to get inside the car. They might be able to actually make this happen, though. Nick quick juggling those cans, and Alice going for a, a couple more cans, actually. Going to throw another two down here. I don't know if they're actually going to get these in, though. Spicko's then going to delay that can bit from being going in. Actually, he's going to get in regardless. One can blowing up. Alice taking an in cap, though. And that's going to be a charge of whiffing. Jucky getting dead stopped. And Nick is not giving up just yet. Ryu looking to make it a little bit longer here. And that charge is going to walk up behind him, get a couple punches. And that hunter is going to have an open to land. So that will be the wipe coming out of the Team AG. Really though, this round, even though this game's over and AG won, SOS won this one so far. Unless unless AG can come out with some amazing hit here though, I'm giving this round to definitely SOS. Oh yeah, SOS. I mean, just based on the entertainment of that amazing SI performance alone, definitely won this round uh, of, the, of the finale in my books. Uh, really putting on a show, regardless of the general outcome of the game. Uh, really putting off a show, and while they might get knocked, uh, contention for the playoff bracket, they are going out in absolute style. And that's just really fantastic to see. Uh, playing it out to the very end and showing their prowess and how if they keep playing uh, and together and maintaining that team chemistry leading up to the next two next few tournaments uh, whenever those may be we could see uh, this being one of the very up and coming teams uh, trying to show that show, uh, prove a lot to the community and so that they show that they're forced to be reckoned with and maybe be a more of a contender for the playoff bracket coming in tournaments to, in the future very nice uh, shutdown onto the uh, SI there by Team SOS. <laughs> I mean, probably about 120th of the damage that happened uh, to Team AG going out there. And now, I mean, 
I'm interested to see just how much we can carry this last bit of momentum. Definitely close the score gap by at least a little bit on this finale. Indeed, and as we near the bottom here, let me just remind you guys in chat, we do have another game tonight. It's going to be quite a doozy. It's pretty much the second highest rated map or matchup of this week. And so please be sure to tune in. It's going to be happening at 11 o'clock. I will expand more on that after this game. But for now, let's keep our concentration here. Survivors, SOS reaching the bottom here. Attack is coming in, though, which gets easily drawn into the elevator, but not so easily crowned. Dark Hunter taking the end cap there, and that's really unfortunate because that first attack, he, or, or as I say from he really demolished the entire attack by himself pretty much, but he will unfortunately take an end cap there due to the Witch, and the tank also up in the hands of Zero Shadows here at 14 AG, looking to close things out here, but we'll see if uh, SOS has other things in store. Yeah, so I mean, slightly unfortunate that they did miss the uh, draw crown into the elevator, but I mean, I mean, this is the, what AG was then where they had a death as well as an in-cap super super separated and one black and white so I, I mean now uh, Survivor's in a very good spot to LOS and just uh, try to chip this tank down little by little uh, actually Rock coming and going to miss there and so Zero is actually super far away this is actually a very precarious spot in, in terms of finding rocks just based on the angle that he's from uh, I think that he made the right play by jumping onto the second floor I do think that's a lot easier to find rocks from there just based on not only the uh, angle but the distance that uh, the tank is from the survivors. He's doing a great job at LOS and he's already done the second path and it looks like he's going to have to commit here which is what I think he's going to be wanting to do. Down to about 50% rage here. He is going to be committing. Zero Shadow is going with the tank looking to close out this game uh, against Team SOS. When we're jumping in going to not land on anybody. Nice pop there going up by Boomfrag. Uh, Tank is looking for a rock though. Jockey can actually land a bit preemptively and support is pretty much getting all shut down. Now Tank is just having to climb up here. Uh because he didn't he really didn't he didn't find anything. His SI didn't find much either. And now he's just looking for rocks. Honestly, the tank didn't take a ton of damage there, but he also didn't find any hits and he's in danger of going AI here. Since Kiss Me is being very silent, I'm gonna keep casting this. I think he's actually recommitting here. Uh, actually getting shot down to about 38% health now. All the SI is getting cleared out very, very quickly. Um, everything's landing a bit preemptively. Tank does actually go AI behind that thing, and he's having a lot of trouble climbing up this thing. Tank is gonna get gunned down here, and that is a shutdown on the tank. After that Witch, uh, I mean, nothing at all coming out of that. All the SI got shut down. Tank had so much trouble finding anything, and ended up going AI on that commit down there. Uh, just based on the very good positioning of the survivors, and now the survivors are in an amazing position to make some kind of uh, point gap comeback here. Uh, Charger again going in by himself to uh, actually land a little bit there, uh, but no spit is going to be able to burn any of those cans. Now the survivors are going to get a few free pours before they go up to the second and third floors. Yeah, actually, Sarah's taking quite a bit of damage there. Once again, sorry, I was actually on the phone there for a second. Um, quick call, though. Regardless, I am back. Another two cans going in here though, for Team SOS. Regardless of what the current situation is for them, even if this game is lost, they want all these cans in. They're going to continue putting them in one by one, fighting their way. Nail and... What is it? Finger and nail? Nail and toe? I don't even remember what the saying is, but regardless, they're going to make their way to the next set of cans here, though. Throwing that one can out there for kind of a distraction for the spitter. The spit does go on top of the staircase there. Hunter getting death stop. Jockey latching on to Nick there for a couple ticks of damage, but this charger not finding a way through the upper floor and down towards the survivor, so we'll see a uh, tooth and nail? Okay. I, I, I was thinking of actual appendages with uh, a nail attached to it for some reason, but yes, tooth and nail. Uh, so yeah. As much as SOS is going to come out of here with a loss, they are really showing uh, their skill as a team here. With an amazing performance on this finale, as well as keeping it uh, tied up, pretty much, going into map 2. A little bit of a hit coming in here, actually damage going out onto uh, Ellis, who, is, who was actually health bonus. Uh, coming down on top of those cans, going to get saved by the survivors, but they did take some chip damage for it, so very nice SI damage coming off of those last few hits. The amount of the experience gap between the two teams here. Team SOS showing that they will be coming back in future tournaments and will have uh, increasingly stronger performances as they are playing, they did play this game, I think, very well. Uh, keeping up with the pace set by AG. I hate you above beyond. 
Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I, I actually really hope to see Team SOS return. Maybe not with the te same team name, obviously, as teams in this game. I have a hard time um, keeping the same name for two tournaments, let alone an entire tournament. But regardless, um, they did play very well. This last map really um, put a shine on it for me. They did quite a good job. And hopefully uh, they do decide to return to the team yet again in a later tournament and possibly uh, you know, make a better placement. Um, because unfortunately, this is going to actually knock them out of contention, if I'm not mistaken, for the finals brackets. So uh, regardless of what happens next week, we unfortunately won't see be seeing Team SOS. Last tank of the game up, though, in the hands of Zero Shadows for Team An Animosity Gaming, who will be securing one last chance at the playoff spot. Top 8, that is. And uh, we'll see if they can actually clinch it next week. But for now, they're looking to end things here to put the nails into the coffin of Team SOS. And it looks like the tank is made by Matt here, though. A nice rock under a shell, and he's actually going to retreat. So not a full commitment just yet, just going in for a little bit of rage. All right, yeah. I mean, so, as you were saying, it does knock uh, Team SOS out of contention for the playoff spot. Uh, it will be only, I believe, only teams that have a record of four wins and two losses or greater that will be moving on. Uh, and Team AG, now this will put them up to a 3-2 and two record, so, I mean, coming off of that 2-2 uh, two two record that they had going into this map, uh, they had to win out and of all of their remaining games in order to make the playoff bracket, and they are well on their way to doing that, coming out with a very nice performance out of this game, uh, with that very solid 27-57 uh, score. And, I mean, yeah, I think that they're very much still in this, and I did predict them to make the playoff bracket going into the tournament. And uh, I'm very interested to see how they play next week to, in order to secure that spot. Most certainly. And it looks like Zero Shadows and his team are actually doing something quite different here. They're actually dropping it. Actually, Tanks are going to do a full commit now. Going to go ahead and uh, strangle Alice up here, up against the table. One more punch would be the end cap, but he's going to go ahead and get out. Actually, he got the end cap. I don't know if uh, the Hunter got the scratch or something, but Alice wasn't nah, really good now. friendly him. player that came oh. out there. Okay, that'll do it. Another rock coming out here from the tank as he drops down onto Rochelle here. He's really just picking them apart at this point. The Hunter's providing really great distraction for him. Another punch and a rock for the tank on the coach. And he's literally just systematically destroying the survivors right now. Just dropping in and out of the area combat. And really just landing the rocks and punches that matter with his SI support. Another rock going in, unfortunately clipping the pillar. So that was not going to be the in-cap out onto Ellis, but the Horde is surrounding him, and he's still locked up. That rock's going to go out, barely missing his foot. Another Charger coming in here, though, with the Jockey. A little bit of damage being pushed on to Rochelle, but this most likely, certainly looks like a white here. 2,000 HP left on this tank for Zero Shadows. Another rock going in, clipping Nick's hitbox there, and this is definitely going to be a white. Charger Smoker. Oh, actually, no, Charger Smoker going in. <laughs> Charger stumbles the Smoker, and uh, Rochelle's still alive. Oh, gets pulled, and there it is. The final cap going out of the Team SOS, and that's going to be GG. Yeah, so I mean, nice job by Zero securing that wipe. Uh, not quite the comeback, uh, closing out a score differential as we wanted. Uh, putting the final scores for Team AG to 27.57 to SOS's 12.19. Uh, those will be the final scores. Uh, Colors has in fact joined our channel. Do you have something to say to us, Colors? Always making it awkward. I don't know. You joined the channel. <laughs>